Well, they call her the water guru, a Fort Lauderdale resident who watches over the canals and the intercoastal and makes a lot of noise when conditions just are not safe. And she's amassed quite the following of concerned residents demanding the city do more to address the water quality issues plaguing their community. Here's tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. If it's a health and safety issue, it affects everyone. For years, Susie Bailey has been sounding the alarm. You're talking about our waterways and you're talking about an area that people come down and visit. Trying to wake people up to the oftentimes dangerous state of Fort Lauderdale's waterways. People could be getting sick and they don't know why. Bailey should know. Back in January of 2020, she got very sick after recreating in the canal behind her Normandy Isles home. Well, I actually found out what I didn't know when I got MRSA paddleboarding on these waterways after 200 million gallons of sewage was flowing into our canals and rivers. It was December of 2019 and the worst sewage spill in Florida history. Antiquated pipes began to burst. You know, there was poop up to where my feet are. Spewing more than 211 million gallons of raw sewage into the Tarpon River and Hemmersheet Canal, impacting waterways and streets from Rio Vista to Victoria Park and Coral Ridge. But Bailey says the city didn't do enough to warn residents to stay out of the water. I got mad because I'm like, where is the information? That's when Bailey launched her crusade. A possible green alternative. Showing up at commission meetings, organizing town halls, pressuring city leaders to not just clean up the water, but to be more vocal with residents when conditions aren't safe. And that bothers a lot of us. We spend a lot of money to live on the waterways. A lot of tax dollars come from those people that live on the waterways. And yet, what's being done for those waterways? Bailey lobbied the city to contract Miami Waterkeeper that since January of 21, every week, tests 10 sites popular for recreation for the presence of fecal indicator bacteria in the water, like here at Annie Beck Park. This area fails about 55% of the time, um, at least over the last three years. It's surrounded by homes and is very close to highly dense urban Fort Lauderdale. When the storms come, the water gets nasty. All of the, the runoff from the streets, from backyards, those are gonna be what's ending up in the water um, and that can contribute to our, our issues with bacteria. Weekly results appear on Miami Waterkeeper's website, social media pages, and on the Swim Guide app that warns visitors to stay out of the water when bacteria levels are too high. Six sites habitually fail. And though there are signs near the waterways with QR codes prompting visitors to check the water quality, Bailey says they're not good enough. We're asking for actual signage that tells people don't go in the water because there's certain areas you don't want to go in or you don't want to fish in. 12-year-old Cruz Ituralde spent last Thanksgiving in the hospital for three days after he got sick fishing in one of the canals. I was eating like some of the fish out of here and it was like really dirty water. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I didn't know that that would happen. I thought the water was clean, but it wasn't. That's why Bailey created Residents for Resilience, a website full of information and constantly updated to educate her neighbors and visitors about the state of these waters. The city of Fort Lauderdale's newly appointed chief resiliency officer says millions of dollars are being spent on capital improvements and stormwater upgrades. Over the course of the last five years, we're easily going to be investing about a billion and a half in new infrastructure upgrading our wastewater treatment plant. Still, spills happen. Oh, well, here we go again. On September 30th, the city says a subcontractor relocating a fiber optic line unintentionally drilled through an existing 54-inch wastewater pipe near Port Everglades, spewing millions of gallons of treated effluent into the intracoastal before it was finally contained a week later. For Bailey, this only underscores the urgency of her mission. If we don't all stand together and start advocating for the health of these waterways, you know, we've got some big problems. So in addition to urgently scaling infrastructure improvements, Bailey is urging the city to look into long-term nature-based solutions like propagating oyster colonies and installing biochar sleeves in the canals to help filter out some of the bad nutrients and bacteria present in the water. She's optimistic pilot programs will 